guys hey Mike I'm a little bit early because I hate being late I'm waiting on it to load here okay good I'm alive I'm alive um so I <laughs> Wanted to show you uh, how I made this cute little butterfly um, using some Simon Hurley products. And um, yeah, I had a little accident with the black drop thingies. So yeah, typical, right? Hi, Don. Hi, Sandy, Pam, Michelle, Mac, uh, Melissa, Jennifer. Um, so, how is the time? I got one more minute. And I'm going to be having a conversation while I'm working on this today. And some people might find it a bit controversial. And, you know, I, it's my hope that your takeaway is, you know, what we're about here on YouTube. Um, so, I'll be using... I'm going to use primarily Simon Hurley and Ranger products today. And uh, no, I do not work for Ranger. I am not sponsored by Ranger in any way. Um, I love their products. I love Simon's products. Um, I do have an affiliate link for Ranger that I didn't even know I had. Found it the other day. <laughs> and so if you do go purchase any products, please use my link. It's down in the description box below. So I'm going to be using Simon Hurley Stark White Cardstock. I'm going to be using this Paisley Peel Apart Background Rubber Stamp. And since I wanted to stick to Simon's products, I'll be using a sentiment from this uh, Puddle Pals set. Because I only have one other set, which is the, the like home one with the couch. And I'll be using Simon Hurley inks. And my Simon Hurley stamping block. So what I'm going to start out with is I'm going to start with an ink blended background. Hi Meg, I said somebody, oh yeah, there you are. Hi Don. Hi Carly. Um, so I'm going to do kind of a, just a mixed color background here. I don't want it to be too bold because our butterfly is going to be bold. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my Simon Hurley inks and I'm gonna use the Ranger Dome Foam Blender. And I just re-inked these so I have no idea what I'm in for. Let me just grab another piece of paper to dab off on in case I need to. I want that to stay there so it doesn't move on me. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start off the canvas Oh, this stuff's squeaky. And I'm going to blend in just three spots. This is the Love Struck. So going pretty random with it. Starting off and then moving in. This paper is great for ink blending on. Especially with Simon's inks. I mean, it was designed for them, so it only makes sense. And so, got myself caught up in a little bit of politics here. And I just, I'm not gonna name names or mention circumstances, but you know, because there's a reason we don't do that. It's, it's, it's just not something you do on YouTube. Um, but I ended up leaving a group that I like very much because of, you know, picking out another group. And so, I'm going to go in with Roar next. 
I started thinking about what we do here on YouTube and how how our I think I better switch blending phones here and how we um, you know we do our lives right and we do our lives for you guys so that people can hang out and chat while they watch our videos it just makes life more pleasant it makes us a more social group and I'm all about you know really building my brand here and so you know my brand is not afraid of color and yeah I have a group uh, do we talk about other people in my group no we do not I wouldn't tolerate it so anyway you know I've heard a lot of and seen a lot of things talking about a group of people that support me 100%. And not only do they support me, but they support the entire community. And um, including, you know, people in need. And so, you know, when I hear or see things that are, you know, untoward or unpleasant about any of my group members, it's really an awkward situation. Um, so, you know, yeah, I did end up leaving the other group because, and I'm using over the moon now, by the way, because I just, it was just really super awkward for me. And, you know, if you, I don't know if any of you guys go on like Simon's live or Tim's live, Tim Holtz's lives, but, um, what you find is if there's any negativity in the chat, those comments get removed. If you talk about other products in the chat while they're demonstrating their products, those comments get removed. It's nothing personal. They just get removed because, you know, the YouTuber is here representing their company. So it'd be, <clears throat> if I were on here representing Simon Hurley, which I am, but not in a, not in a professional capacity, um, if people were talking about and making long conversations about other products, I would have no choice but to remove those comments because it takes away from the company that I'm doing a demo for. And so, you know, I just want people to understand that it is really absolutely nothing personal if your comment gets removed. Or if you are continually negative, if you get hidden on the channel. And so... You know, I love doing videos for you guys, and I love doing them live with you guys. Um, and I want to continue to do that. Let's throw a little triple berry in here, too. Why not? Looks like ice cream sherbet, huh? It is. It's a respect thing, and it's... You know, if, if we ask you, please don't do that, just don't do it. It's not like we're trying to be um, a cult or, you know, a group of people that are haters against other companies. You know what? Um, if I'm doing a video for a company that I am representing and you want to come on and start talking about another company, it's not that I don't love that company. I do. I absolutely do. Um, it's about what my obligation is representing a particular company. I'm going in with a little bit more roar here. So today, even though I'm working primarily with Ranger products, I don't care if you want to talk about your switch. <laughs> it's fine. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. And, and, you know, if you're on, on one of our channels and you're having a conversation or asking about somebody that has gone or is not part of the group any longer, it's not that we hate them or, you know, we don't want to hear anybody talking about them. It's, it's that it's none of our business what they're doing with their lives. Okay, I'm going to wet this down a little. Isn't that beautiful? I just love Simon's inks.
so you know what could end up happening is is youtubers could and i can see why some of the big names don't do a lot of live chats or live videos because you know they're stop being fun when you have to police what's going on in the group okay there's our background we'll set that aside i didn't want it to be too busy but i did oh, love those colors together amazing so that was over the moon triple berry roar what happened to my i thought i had the new love struck oh and, and love struck did i use it i think i did maybe i didn't Maybe I better put some in just in case. <laughs> just in case. Which it's kind of a pinky color too. And just put it here and there. So, you know, to the groups that I had to leave, I still love you guys. It's just too uncomfortable for me to, you know promise that I'll follow your group rules and then be put in a position where I can't. So, okay. So now we've got our background done. All right. Next thing up my sleeve is to get out this peel apart rubber background stamp. And I'm not even going to take it off of this. I am going to flip it over and I'm going to grab my paper and I'll continue to use the stark white cardstock for this. Let's see if I can fit two on here. I think I can. And what I'm wanting to stamp out is just this center part right here. If I get some excess, that's okay. Um, and I'm going to turn on my heat tool now uh, so it's warmed up. Hi, Venus. Hi, Debbie. Different crowd on the daytimes, huh? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use Birth Fine Claire. It's the only non- Ranger product I'm using here that I can tell on this thing. Rabbit hole designs. Everybody had one, so I had to have one too. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just dust this whole thing with it. Okay. And I'll probably end up dusting it again. I'm going to go in just to the center and stamp down my verse fine card. It's okay if you get other parts because you're gonna fussy cut. Unless you have a scan and cut and you fill up doing that, fussy cut is the way to go. I'm gonna just lay this on here. And I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of get it all pressed down. Trying not to get my fingers in the black ink. And pull it up. Yeah, it's good enough. I got a little close to the edge there, but it'll be fine. This is uh, Ranger Clear um, Embossing Powder. And I'll go ahead and heat emboss this one. Oh, my tool stuck. Okay. Sorry about the noise. I'm going to go ahead and emboss everything that has embossing powder on it so I don't have to fight the powder later. Okay, there's one. Now I'm going to do another, and I'm going to go ahead and get a fresh piece of paper because that was cutting it pretty close right there. And I can use that scrap for something else. Okay, I've just put some of uh, this anti-static powder on here. Great, don't even have to take it off the thingy. That's my technical term of the day, thingy. Hi, Chow. Huh. 
Happy Groundhog Day, by the way. It's 2222 today. If you are into numerology, which I have no idea what that might mean. That one came out better. Okay. Let's get my clear embossing powder. Let me just move this out of the way. Done with that. All right, so we've got those done. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be painting them. And so I'm gonna move this over a little. I almost thought about doing Mardi Gras colors, but <clears throat> maybe that's for another video. Carly, enjoy breakfast. <laughs> I mean, um, he didn't see a shadow here in Alabama because we got rain and wind. So I'm going to start, and you want to paint them the same, both the same. I'm going to start with, let's go ahead and start with Love Struck. Let me just get these stamping foams out of the, these pointing foams out of the way. And what I have is I just have a plain old, small paintbrush and then I have a water brush and I like to use the water brush to get it wet and then the paintbrush for painting just like Simon does it hi Janine so I'm just gonna put some ink down here on the on my uh, glass mat can you guys see that okay looks like you can and I'm going to just put some water up above it. And I don't care if it runs against each other. And this is the love struck that I'm using. And I am going to paint. Let's see, what part do I want to paint with the love struck? And what did I do on the other one? I think I'm going to do these, these outside lines with the love struck today. So I'm gonna stay in the same color palette that I used for the background. And let me just put that within sight so I can refer to it if I need to. And I'm not wetting this down first because I'm not doing any shading or anything. I'm just straight painting. It's too small of an area to shade and I can't see that well. So this is the, I mean, this part would take the longest and you could, honestly, you could just ink blend this out if you wanted to, but you know, how unzen is that? Let's go for the zen, gives you guys more time to chat. I much prefer doing my lives during daylight hours. Mine are always, well, since the time change always in the evenings when it's dark and it's still dark because of the rain but that's okay summer's coming <laughs> uh, yeah that's what we all wish How, are any of you stuck in a blizzard right now a foot of snow Meg oh my gosh So you just need a tiny brush. You could do this honestly with markers if you wanted to. It would also probably look cool just plain black and white. Oops, and if you go over, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's just paper, it's a handmade card. And this is a tiny spot we're working with. See, 
You have to get pretty close to it to be able to see what the heck I'm doing. So if my head's in shot, sorry about that. This love stuck, struck is a really pretty color. I love anything red. And, and to me, though, this is a more of a pinky red. But it's still red. You could also just use like the re-inkers. I have a little palette with re-inkers in it that I could be dipping into, but it's such a mess I'm embarrassed to show it on screen. I need to really clean it, but I don't want to waste any of my beautiful ink. There's that one little spot that I missed, but it's okay. And I'm not worried about going outside the lines because I'm going to fussy cut this right to the black line. Whew. <laughs> I already did one once today. It's not that bad. It's not like a whole lot of sharp angles you have to cut. Now I don't have Simon's Spring Assist scissors, so I haven't. I have some big ones like that that I'm not crazy about, but I haven't tried the smaller ones. Probably because mine are really stiff. So it's hard to chomp the paper. And I somehow managed to get a nick in the blade, which is so annoying. Oops, we got inside the circle there. No biggie. Nothing in nature is perfect. Okay, let's make sure I got all those. Yes, I did. All right, I'm going to go to the next one. Get a little bit more water in here because I'm running low on water. And do exactly the same with this one. I don't think Simon watches my videos. He said he was excited to see what I do with it, but I don't think he actually watches them. <laughs> Thank you, Janine. Or, it's not Janine. I know that. It's Jenin. <laughs> it's just easier to say Janine. Yeah, if you had like some markers with a very fine tip, you could just do this with markers and have it done a lot quicker. I keep getting inside on that one. That's all right. It'll mix well with the, I'm going to use Roar for that portion that's in those center pieces. Um, honestly, painting is my favorite thing to do with Simon's inks, whether I'm watercoloring something that, you know, is freestyle or, you know, painting a stamp, a stamped image. It's just, I absolutely love these colors. I'm quiet, I'm just focused. So I want you to know that I do appreciate each and every one of you um, for supporting my channel. And I, I you know, want you to know that going forward and historically, I fully support the uh, Flying Snobs Club. And um, so I just won't tolerate any any nonsense. Those guys have helped me build my brand. 
when they didn't even think and know me really. They just had faith in my ability and, and I do too. Most times, <laughs> sometimes not. <laughs> It, it's super relaxing. I mean, I, I fully enjoy this. Hey, Tracy, Simon's watching and he's remarking. Oh, Simon, hi. <laughs> you are here. How about that? He said his ears were burning. Oh, thank you. Well, you know. So, yeah. I think we're done with the love struck. Looks like we are. Okay, perfect. All right, next color. <laughs> So if you missed the beginning, um, I showed this butterfly I made earlier today, and that's what we're doing with these paisley stamps is we're making a butterfly. Kind of get my, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with Roar, a nice vibrant orange. And I don't do like Simon does. I put my colors down one at a time because you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flop my hand in it and make a mess. So let me get some water there. Get that little piece of whatever out of there. Must be a piece of paint from last night. I don't know who was here with me last night when I was doing that challenge with finger paints. So I'm gonna do all the insides of these with the roar. These parts will go a lot quicker, folks. Again, I'm not bothering to water anything down because I'm just doing single, single painting. There's not a lot of room for shading in here except for maybe in between the flower there. Well, thank you, Simon. I mean, I have lots of other plans for that paisley, but um, the minute I saw it, I saw a butterfly. And so I'm like, okay, that's what I'm doing with it as soon as I get it. And I just got it yesterday. Yeah, I did do the inside of those. Okay. This, I love this orange. Make sure I got everything. Yes, I did. Okay. Let's get this one. I saw a YouTube post about that Hawaiian guy that sings somewhere over the rainbow with his ukulele, and now I can't get the dang song stuck out of my head. Now, you'll have to wing it when you're making the body, but it's basically just a football, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the chat a whole lot because I'm focused here on what I'm doing. I can barely see what I'm doing. It, normally it's, I mean, my head is right completely over the top of it. Okay. Done with the roar. Gonna wipe that up. And I'm going to be going in with the over the moon, so I want my brush to be clean. Look how easy this stuff cleans up, though. You could even, like, paint in some lunar paste in there, um, depending on the colors you're using. Yeah, that would be pretty. Uh, let's see, I want to go in with Over the Moon. This, uh, guys, everybody knows this is my very favorite Simon Hurley color. 
I don't know why. It's just a yellow that I can't get over. Okay. So I'm going to paint the insides of these with the Over the Moon. I just re-inked that. It's very small areas, but except for this area right here, which is a bigger area, of course. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you guys can hear my cat, George. He's down there crying. He's a little attention hog. And I smeared some in there a little bit, but that's okay. It still looks pretty. So that's why I'm using colors that, you know, kind of coordinate with each other. Okay, that's over the moon on that one. Breakfast slept in. Oh yeah, awesome ideas, Jenin. Okay. Hmm, thinking what color do I want to make that flower? If I used my favorite color for the background here. I'll probably use triple berry. Hey, then I might have an option to use some lunar paste because I have it. I have it all. Okay. There is the over the moon. <laughs> okay. You know what? Mm. I'm going to use some overzealous, also a favorite. And get the outsides of the leaves. See, I got sloppy there and slopped some over. And this paisley design begs to be painted or colored. There's just no way you could not color it. Double chocolate what? Oh, a double chocolate brownie? Mmm. Yeah, well, I got myself into trouble yesterday. I ate two white chocolate Reese's Hearts, the big ones. And that was the reason I had to abruptly leave my life yesterday. <laughs> um, I should never eat that much candy in one sitting. I know, too much information. Okay. You could just about get every color in the palette in here. Let me grab the Tropical Tango. Don't need a bunch of it. Oops. Oh, no. Mess up your stuff there. Give me this. And get the inside of the leaves with that. Ooh, pretty. And I think I'll hit the insides of these with the Tropical Tango as well. Some spots that you see it didn't hit is because I didn't do such a great job with my anti-static powder. So the paint, you know, the ink won't stick to it. Resists. Oh, somehow I did the centers of those with over the moon and didn't even realize it. Oh well. Still more work. It's 
still works. All right, let's get this, tackle this flower. I think I will go in with the triple berry for the inside. these parts. for the outsides. Just going back and reading. <laughs> Brownies, come on now. The only, the other thing about doing a live during the daytime is I'm not so worried about what time it is. Because, you know, I work and I get myself used to not having to function after a certain hour. Alright, so guess what I'm doing next? I bet you can't guess. my prom queen go. I know she's here somewhere. I'm going to go ahead and just give these a little pizzazz. And I know that um, traffic cone is not roar, but I think it'll work because I'm just going to go in lightly. So I'm going to go from the inside out. I'm just gonna use what's in the lid. I'm gonna use the same brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and lightly brush on in the centers of these flowers, just to give it a little bit of a glow, a little bit of a sparkle, a little bit of an oomph. Simon needs to come out with a clear one that's sparkly. Then he wouldn't have to sell any colors, though. <laughs> this will dry really quick. Okay, I'm prom queen. This is really a brilliant color. I, I want to be careful. I don't want to go over my black here, so I'm being very, very careful. So a very, very teeny tiny brush, and just a teeny tiny bit on the brush. I don't want to make a mess, but I do want that kind of a glow going here. White, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Then we get to do the fussy cutting, which I like doing. If you don't like fussy cutting, you could always stamp it out and throw it in your scan and cut. Um, you know, I've tried to scan stuff in to my Cricut, but it never comes out the size that I scanned it in Design Space. So when you, if you do something like that, what you want to do is measure your stamp in centimeters and then set the 
set the rulers in design space in centimeters because it comes out a lot, lot closer that way than trying to do it in inches. I'm just cleaning my brush in a little bit of water till it comes clear. Super easy. By the time I get my brush clean, these should be dry enough to cut out. Oh, Jen, and that is so kind of you to say. All right. So when I'm fussy cutting something like this, I like to rough cut it first because I have a heck of a time fighting with this overhang junk. It's just too hard for me. I see Simon just whiz right through it, but here it is in my way, making me nervous. So I'll rough cut. And I will be cutting all the way to the edge. You could leave a border if you wanted to. And make sure that's dry. Let me just give that a quick dry. I don't want to make a mess of it. Um, there's nothing wrong with the, any art as far as I'm concerned. Just make sure everything's all nice and dry here. Plus that, it'll bring back the shine to the um, embossing powder. All right, now let's get this bad boy cut out. And do I wanna use these scissors? No, I think I wanna use my little Tim Holtz trimmers here. I think that's what I used before. And I'm gonna be cutting all the way to the black line here. If I get a little on the outside, that's okay. Not a huge deal. But these paisleys, honestly, are not hard to cut out. And you could actually do, you know, the entire stamp and um, cut out all the paisleys and put them, you know, individually places that you might like. Make great ephemera. So when you're cutting directly to the edge, of course, you're being a lot more careful. <laughs> you don't accidentally cut off a part of your beautiful design. And see, when I get to a corner like that, I'll come in from the other side and clip it away. Rather than trying to tear, the, you know how when sometimes you tear it out, you get a white space there? I don't want that. Like a little, I don't know, like a little remnant or a little white paper booger. And you turn your paper, not your scissors. Honestly though, if you emboss something, it's a lot easier to cut close to the edge. It's almost like you can feel the edge with your scissors. Yeah, it's just a little bit of resistance, and it's enough for me. So see, here I am going into this corner again, and it doesn't really matter because I'm going to cut these apart, but just for learning's sake. See, I feel like if you tried to scan and cut this, it wouldn't get it all the way to the black edge. You'd have to put in some black on your own, and, and you could certainly do that. Hmm. I'm a little over, but that's okay. Or under, I should say. 
Okay, almost there. Simon, are you getting completely hammered there in Wisconsin, uh, snow-wise? That's one reason why I'm glad I don't live in places where it snows. All right, there's one. I don't know how long that took. I didn't look at the time, but... <laughs> I'm gonna get my big scissors and we're gonna put them, okay. I'm just gonna cut around here. This paper is pretty sturdy, so fussy cutting it, it's a little, you know, it's a little bit difficult, you know, compared to like your 80 pound paper. I think this is probably 110 pounds. I don't know, I tossed the wrapper a long time ago. I just take all my paper and I cut it up and I put it into little baggies. Oh, that's good to know. Well, no, Mac, it's raining, but I mean, it's not cold. I saw your post that it's really, really cold in Oklahoma. I don't know why that just surprises me. You know, when I think of Oklahoma, I think of Texas and I don't think of cold weather when I think of Texas. Right there was where I missed a spot because I underestimated my stamping space. So you could take a black pen and just go over that. My youngest son is having back surgery today. He messaged me at like 11.30 last night after I'd long gone to bed. Oh, my surgery is tomorrow. I'm like, great. So I messaged him at like 5.30 this morning. He lives in Oregon, mind you. <laughs> so it was probably 3.30 his time. I'm like, what time? Who's taking you? What, blah, blah. He never answered me. So I'm just going to assume he's in surgery right now and hope that he's okay. I can't imagine being 24 years old and needing back surgery. I could see it, you know, at my age. Thanks, Meg. Texas gets cold? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just I can't wrap my head around that. I have to ask Biddy Penny. She lives in Texas. Um, I think she lives around Austin. I guess it probably depends on what part of Texas. I mean, southern Texas, you are. Well, kind of like southern Alabama, I guess. Almost done cutting. See, that's what I'm talking about. Those are the things I want to avoid. Those little white specks of paper. Which makes the great case for leaving a border, right? Because generally you don't have that issue because you're all your corners you're cutting are basically rounded. Yeah, I found out I was um, trying to get an affiliate link for another company, and I had applied for one for Ranger a long time ago, and I'm just, you know, kind of naive when it comes to this kind of stuff, so I had no idea that they said yes, and I've had a, an affiliate link the whole time. I had no idea. Crazy me. You know, that's really cool of companies to do that. You know, even if you just, and I've kind of made a little rule for myself that I'm only allowed to make purchase now for maybe a couple of months 
Um, if I, uh, with any money I make off of YouTube. So what I want to do now, I've got these all cut out. Now I'm going to be cutting these apart. And I'm going to cut them right at the, so I'm going to leave these little ears here, right? But I'm not going to leave the other one. So I'll show you, just going to cut it straight down. Set that guy aside. I'm going to cut it straight down. And it won't, my scissors don't want to bend that way, so I'll come back up from here. So I know that those two went that way. But they're not going to go that way, they're going to go this way. You see, now the tricky part here is that these basically go the same direction. So you're going to have your butterflies just going to be a little bit on the wonky side, but that's okay. So he's going to go like this, and then he's going to have these added little parts right here. Kind of balances the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this scrap paper here. I'm just going to use my circle cutter, and you don't have to use a circle cutter. You can just cut a little piece of paper. It's just an anchor. Uh, yeah, it is in the description. It's Ranger. I, at least I think I put, put it there. So I am going to take my little circle here, and I'm going to use it to anchor my wings here. I'm going to just go ahead and just glue this part of the wing so it's basically in the center of the circle. Okay. And I want to take this one and I want to make sure, because they are shaped in a different way, that they're pretty much parallel up at the top. Pretty much. means I have to scoot this guy down a little that's fine so you see they're not they're not symmetrical and that's fine then I'm going to take and do basically the same with these guys down here and I am using my reptile adhesive because um, whenever I put the um, the multimedia mat in a small bottle like this, I can't squeeze it out. I just don't have the hand strength. So they are going to be overlapping some, and that's okay. I'm going to put these guys, and I'm just going to offset them a little bit. Down like this. Oh, that's a good idea, Simon. And I do have the stamping foam. So what? You, you're going to have to explain that to me, I think. But it's not necessary because we're just not necessarily symmetrical as people. <laughs> now, I'm going to let that dry just for a minute because I'm going to cut away all this white part. And while I'm waiting for that... I'm just going to go ahead and take another piece of scrap here and cut myself a carrot, I guess. I guess you could call it a carrot. Pretty thin, and I probably have it too long, but that's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's going to represent the body. 
and that's going to go on top after I let this dry enough so that I can manipulate it. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and color this. I'm just going to color it with a marker because I want it to be black. And I could also do um, some heat embossing on that. Get that picked up. White stamp one. Uh. Oh, can you see it now? Okay, great. Make sure I don't have any ink on me. <laughs> All right, so this is dry enough to go ahead and cut away this excess right here. I don't want to accidentally cut my wing. But you want that so that you have an anchor point to glue your stuff down too. This is the part I'm horrible at is going the other direction. So I'll just come up. Just trim that away. There's a little bit, I, these scissors are not useful for that. Normally I would use my knife, but I'm not gonna get out the whole knife shebang right now. See, I got one of those little paper schlobbers. Grab my tweezers and pull it out of there. Yep. Just trying to do this without accidentally clipping my wing. still a little bit on the wet side. Just want to make sure you can't see it. There we go. I'm not going to fuss over that too much more because it'll make me crazy. All right, so now we've got butterfly cut out, we've got our background, and let me, I didn't trim this in advance, let me trim it down. Use a like verse fine ink so it stays wet to get a mirror image. Stamp one on foam. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've done those, those um, I haven't tried it with the stamping foam though. Okay, I'm gonna trim this down to I'm gonna go ahead and go with, yeah, let's just go with four by five and a quarter. I don't think that went straight at all. Oh, that was bad. That was really bad. There we go. Bye, child, thank you. So cool of her to homeschool Kyle. So when you're placing him on here, you can actually have a little leeway. And let's see, I got a got a piece of black cardstock ready to roll. I'm gonna go ahead and place this on the black cardstock first. So I've got a black border. And honestly, you can use any colors you want. And you left your lid off your glue too long. There we go. I don't have one of those, um, those glue gun thingy, you know, those glue gun tape thingies. So primarily I just use my reptile adhesive. I was using tape for a while, but I don't entirely trust tape to hold. that on there straight. See a little bit of 
a little bit of glue coming out there. I don't want that. You grab a paper towel. And this is how I'll press these down, especially when I'm working with black, because even though that glue dries clear, it's shiny, and I don't want shine. Okay, so now we can place our butterfly. And I've got a, just a little bit of white sticking out there, a little more than I don't want. Where do I see that right there? I'm just going to trim it off. There we go. And because you've placed that, you've got a place to put your glue. I'm just going to glue him straight down. His wings can still fly. Or her wings. Their wings can still fly. Now, I think the body's a little too long. So I'm just going to trim it. This is one of those deals where you go to give yourself a haircut and you end up bald because you just kept clipping off one end, clipping off the other. Okay. I'm just going to glue that down. But it'd be pretty generous with the glue here because it's got to glue to a lot of layers. And it's kind of just sitting up. I'm just going to give it a nice firm push. And I'll set that aside while I do my sentiment. Do, 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 do. And I've got... got the puddle pills and I think I'm gonna do I'm here for you rain or shine even though it is completely unrelated it works hi Georgiana thank you all awesome and early colors and Let's see if I have a big enough piece of scrap to, it doesn't have ink on it. Yep, I'm going to need to do a fresh one. All right, I got the dirt everywhere. Oh, y'all should have seen, if you weren't here last night, you should have seen the mess that I had. <laughs> I'm just going to cover this whole thing. I'm going to go ahead and warm up my heat tool. stamping block and lay this right along the line there so it's straight just like that looks straight to me and I'm going to use my verse fine clear Hopefully, I only have to do this once. That's good enough. These scoops I get at the dollar store in the wedding section, and at the dollar twenty-five store, I should say. And this is just a drawer that I got from uh, Tuesday morning from a makeup, like a makeup type drawer. But I got like eight of those scoops for a dollar. There we go. Now here's where Simon shines in cutting out sentiments. I'm horrible at it. So I'm gonna rough cut it like I always do. So nothing gets in my way. Put 
feel like I'm blind here. I think I'll use these scissors and start kind of in a... Luckily, there's not a lot of twists and turns in this particular sentiment. <laughs> Right here is where I run into trouble, getting around that curve without making a mess. that. I'm going to pop that up. I got out my foam squares beforehand to make sure that I had my act together when I came on live. And I have some that I'll just take my scissors and just cut these in half in the whole line. So I have some left over from the last time I did that. way. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Well, if you're steady handed, they will. I wonder if I can get that one up without wrecking it. No, I'm not going to try. Now, just if you're like me and have problems with me, these, I take my pokey tool one's all bent and I stab it and then pull uh, like that <laughs> stab then pull what's that um <laughs> what's that movie where she I think we were talking about it the other night on a live where she is a uh, legally blonde where she's teaching the beautician or the nail lady how to kick, no, swish, and I don't know, jerk. <laughs> okay, so there we have it. Uh, I've got um, the the Simon Hurley. This is the. The Paisley background stamp, and I've just used the center portion. I've colored it. I have colored this with um, all Simon Hurley inks. I used Roar, Triple Berry, Over the Moon, um, Prom Queen, Love Struck, Overzealous, Clear Skies, and this was just ink blended and wet on Simon Hurley um, Stark White cardstock. Swish and, no, Swish and Flick is from Harry Potter. Yeah, I used to tell that to my kids when I used to catch them picking their nose. <laughs> so, guys, thank you for joining me today, and thank you for putting up with my little rant about what happened last night. Um, <clears throat> hopefully we can all be kind to each other and be respectful, you know, of designers' channels when they are working with their product. It's their product that needs to be highlighted. Thank you, Simon. Bend and snap. Thank you, Don. That's it. <laughs> yeah, if I do that, I'll break a hip. But um, you could put glossy accents on there or something like that. But I went just a little over an hour, which I generally try not to do. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming. I appreciate your support now and always. Simon, that was so cool you came on my channel. I am psyched. <laughs> Y'all have a good rest of your day and have a safe week. Bye-bye.